three, yeah. two, one, we are live. Hello. Hi. Hello to everyone watching. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we have a camera up here with a camera down there, mm. but uh, this is the Zoom camera right here. Thanks for joining us. This is a webinar uh, to talk about the developer prospects at World Creation. Yes. Uh, sitting next to me is the CTO, Matthias Norn, and my name is Denise James. Um, I'm, uh, what do I do? I talk a lot. So I will talk to you a little bit today, but Matthias is going to go into some detail about what Worlds is, the SDK that we're using, the ball itself, and different uh, technological variants that we are offering at Worlds. Hmm. Uh, what you can do is ask questions. We're going to answer them at the end of the stream, so definitely stand by till the end. Uh, what you can do is you can just type in your questions in the little chat box at the bottom of your screen. We're going to answer all the questions at the end. So, yeah. With, uh, and otherwise, if we don't uh, hear your questions right now, feel free to drop them in later. You can uh, tweet Facebook or Instagram to World Creations. And uh, if you want to find out more about Worlds, you can also head over to worlds.com. That's W-R-L-D-S, worlds.com. We've got a lot more information there. And otherwise, you can drop us an email uh, to Matthias. It will share the email at the end. Stay tuned. We will. Yeah. So. So here we are. Here we are. <laughs> well, um, basically, uh, we will talk about the SDK today. Mm. Um, and, the, you know, any any developers that are interested can reach out to me. They can reach out to basically anyone at Worlds. Also, um, we are open to any type of cooperations or, or anything like that. So so uh, without further ado, um, should we talk a little bit about the history first? Where we definitely, are? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Or do you want so, me to introduce myself what, first? Uh, <laughs> we well, did have... talk a bit about the history. Yeah. Let's talk go for the history. Because yeah. we don't know where you guys are from, mm. but we'll assume you don't know much. So let's start. Yeah. So uh, the history of worlds is um, it's kind of kind of compressed really really fast. For for me, it's almost been a year now. Um, we uh, Worlds were basically a brainchild of uh, the Waboba co-founder, co uh, Christian von Helland. Um, the Waboba uh, is a company that makes water and land bouncing balls. So basically balls that you can skip over water or you can bounce them in crazy ways on land. Um, and uh, it's been a successful company. They, they've, this far they've sold a bit of 20 million balls, yes. Um, Christian had this idea that he wanted to make this uh, more technological, more, more connected, so, or get it connected. Uh, so he set out on, uh, on creating this ball, the first version, and he, he uh, got together with um, uh, Mink, who runs the factory that is actually uh, producing these balls. Uh, Mink has been a huge, huge asset in this. Uh, he, he basically makes sure that we that we get everything we need over in China when we produce the balls. Uh, also on the research, uh, research and development phases, uh, Mink has been also uh, bringing a lot of uh, contacts in for us um, and for Christian. Uh, Christian. Christian was more or less alone in this in the beginning. He, he came to um, a company called Boss ITG uh, in October last year. Uh, together with his father and presented the ball to us and said, you know, hey, we need uh, we need um, uh, help getting this off the ground basically and uh, Boss ITG is is uh, is a company that um, Focuses mainly on IOT products and mm -hmm. this ball is an IOT product uh, Internet of things internet of things. Yes, um, so it's a connected toy, but it can be so much more and we'll get to that later on mm -hmm. but uh, when when Boss ITG saw this product they, they said yes we can definitely help out with this. Um, I was I was a technical advisor at, at the company at that point and um, uh, got into uh, basically taking charge of uh, bringing in the technology into the company, uh, into Worlds. Uh, and at that point, Worlds wasn't really formed. There was an idea, a big vision from Christian. Uh, we we are still following that vision, uh, which is great. It's uh, it's a very solid vision. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's where we started, basically. That's where I came in. Uh, I spent about 
three months, four months, trying to kind of figure out the software in the ball, mm -hmm. the connectivity, the hardware, what we should do with it, and you know how how we how we should um, supply um, the SDK to the developers, uh, and and you know how we would work with this the easiest, you know, to get everybody started as fast as possible. You were doing this alone. Um, on the technical, technical side, yes. Mm. Uh, there was also uh, Anna in Boss ITG who helped out with structuring the, the work process. Mm. Um, uh, also Eric, who, uh, who uh, helps out with, uh, with the business development side of, of everything. Uh, so, so that's kind of what Boss ITG do. They bring extra resources to the table uh, to help out. And, and from there on, it's gone really fast. To, to getting into a point of where, where we're now scaling this. Um, uh, the company is real, the, the product is real. We've already had balls, you know, sold balls. We have them out on, with developers and, and we keep on pushing to actually build everything that we can do. Um, so, so yeah, that is kind of the history this far. <laughs> In a big, big compressed into ball. One year. Into a ball, even. Yeah, into a ball. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? You have to tell us a bit about yourself, of course. Yeah. Your, your history goes way back. I know you have a combination of skills that you bring to the table that isn't just IoT, that isn't just uh, manufacturing balls. No, no. It's, um, I, I come from a long background of, of initially media. Um, I've been around in most of the media media sphere. I've been doing TV commercial, radio, and, and but mostly on the technology side every time. So so I've always been working with technology. Uh, I, I went into IT really early, uh, even when I was a kid. I, I had my com first computer when I was at, uh, eight or something like that. And um, I've basically uh, gone from me media over into IT. Uh, at one point, I got uh, I got employment at uh, Nokia, um, which led me to be uh, going from just a developer into more like a developer evangelist. Um, that, in its in turn, led to uh, a quick run in with Microsoft, which took over Nokia. And that was great. That was. Uh, you know, learning even more about the big business side of, okay. of development. Um, and then um, on that, it led me to become a develop, development manager on mobile phones for mobile uh, development teams, uh, which kind of led me into ITG uh, in the end, which uh, where, where uh, I kind of uh, took all of this knowledge on, on, on mobile development and app development, any type of app development, uh, and also technologies around mobiles and then IoT products in, in various corners of the world, kind of uh, air conditioners and um, um, in-store IoT, things like that. Uh, and then also products like consumer product IoT. Uh, so, so it's been a long journey getting up to this point, right? uh, working right. with this type of product. Yeah. Um, and and, and you know, it's a ball, but the, the, the kind of uh, the potential in this ball is is so much more. It's like it, for for a for an, uh, a direct end consumer, it looks like a ball, but it, it has so much you know technology uh, potential in there. So it's kind of it's innovation in in a nutshell or in a ball. Right. <laughs> it's, right. it's innovation in a ball, basically. But but and that that kind of that is what drives me. I like innovation when when it comes to products or. Uh, anything that you use on a daily basis. I like to kind of reinvent a concept that somebody is used to and then uh, uh, innovate on that concept to bring technology forward and make more people feel like, you know, this is what the future should be. Um, and that together with uh, developers, <laughs> you know, working with developers, working with, um, uh, working with teams um, and, and seeing that, you know, this potential can, can, uh, move people forward also mm -hmm. in companies, uh, mm. which is why I'm here at Worlds. Uh, you know, my focus as a CTO is not just looking at tech, it's making sure that whatever people are working with this and, and whatever uh, developers are experiencing this, this technology, um, they, uh, they should feel that this is the next level of things. And, and that's what it is. 
it is the next level of things. Totally. Which is great. So yeah, so it's, yeah. it's that's that's where I'm from. Yeah, and, and you've worked with big teams. You've worked with small yeah, teams. You're, yeah. You've got a you've got a bit of a leadership I've bio been, behind you. Yeah, I've been around uh, small startups before, mm -hmm. uh, and I you know Nokia, Microsoft being these big corporations with fantastic development uh, uh, philosophies, um, uh, where where. The, the core thing has always been to to focus about teamwork. Um, so yeah, so just uh, recently I worked with uh, distributed teams here in Sweden and in Bangladesh, okay. um, building those teams, helping people get started, finding a process that works for these people, uh, and then bringing them forward. And and a lot of several of the guys at the the offices in Bangladesh, they actually started their own startups based on these kind of theories and experiences. That that I could give to them, so it's um, amazing. It's a it's a fun thing. To yeah. Do. yeah, where are you guys from, by <laughs> the way? Can you type in the comment section where you are sitting today, and maybe tell us where you're from too? Be super curious. The yeah. cool thing about having a webinar, of course, is that we can uh, stream anywhere in the world, hmm. and we do hope to get anywhere in the world. W R L D. Yeah, yeah. that's world. where we want to go. So, Definitely let us know. Yeah. So where do we go on from here? We go into the product. The, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think something that people today watching really want to know about mm. is the SDK. SDK. That's what we're going to talk um, about. Right? And maybe just first define, just in case uh, some of you don't know what an SDK is, if you maybe just explain that. Yes. What it is. Yes. What an SDK is. Yes, so uh, an SDK, uh, SDK stands for Software Development Kit. Uh, it basically, it can be, it's a collection of different things that uh, a, you, know, you as a developer will, will use, uh, will want to use uh, to, to, um, to get, get started faster, to get into, you know, utilize all the features. In our case, utilize the features of the ball. Uh, and, and in the future, be able to utilize any other features or, or functions that we that we push for, you know, via cloud services and things like that. Um, so basically, when you do a development, uh, any any app or anything, and you want to use a third third party service, an external service or a hardware product, then you usually have an SDK. So in our case, it is uh, it consists of native libraries for iOS and Android. Um, we now also have uh, gotten a couple of open repositories for on on GitHub uh, that uh, makes the ball uh, connectable directly to a computer, even directly to the web browser. Okay. So in theory, or actually in practicality, you can use the ball to uh, execute functions in the web browser, which okay. is something that will amazing. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but it's, it's kind of it's, is that still Bluetooth enabled? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's okay. uh, basically the ball connects and, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, over Bluetooth every time. So the SDK enables this communication with the Bluetooth uh, or over Bluetooth. Uh, it also uh, it interprets any type of data that is inside of the ball um, and kind of converts that into something that makes more sense to the developer uh, and to the end user. So if you bounce the ball, for example, we get loads of different data, but we need to kind of compress that into something that's a bit simpler to handle and understand and, and makes more sense in mm -hmm. the end. Um, so, so, you know, bouncing the ball, that will, that will create a bounce. Uh, and that's the event that we, in the end, will deliver to the, to the app and say the, the ball bounced. Okay, um, an event. Yeah, an event. That's so basically any any type of event that we feel like we we want to expose over the SDK that will show up basically. So uh, so it's it's a it's a trigger and okay. that says now there's data from the ball. Okay, that is what an event is. Yeah. So so the SDK contains this through the libraries. Uh, it contains documentation on this and also uh, different type of code examples. Uh, it also in our case it includes. Uh, these uh, example projects. So both for native, uh, in, you know, natively using it and starting to build your app, we have these projects where you can basically just open the project and start working on it right away. You press compile and it starts up and there's your example. And then you can modify this. So in essence, you can actually use this as a template. Okay. So that means that, you know, that it's, it's a template and it's an example in its own uh, or, or at the same time. Um, and the same thing goes for Unity. We have a Unity example project uh, for any game developers that's used to using Unity. Yeah. 
uh, where this kind of template can be used straight out of the box, basically just plug it in, open up in Unity, uh, run it on the phone, and it will start connecting and looking for a ball. Okay. And as long as you have the ball, then wake the ball up and it will connect. Amazing. Yeah. Unity is dependent on having a mobile device as well as the like, computer? No. Or, okay. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Unity is uh, both for iOS and Android mobile mm -hmm. devices mm -hmm. and tablets. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use it on iOS. We're working on that currently, but it will be available. You will be able to connect uh, on desktop games also. Um, uh, we are even exploring the options. We have the functionality, but we haven't we're not finished implement, implementing it, but we, do, we will actually move into the TV space also, um, which might sound a bit daunting, throwing balls around the TV, but you, the thing is you don't have to always throw the ball. You can just move the ball and use it as a controller, like okay. a, a mouse in the air or whatever okay. you want. Um, so, so basically that data can control some games on the TV. Okay. On Apple TV yeah. or or, or uh, Google Google um, uh, Chromecast or yeah. some, or well, not Chromecast but Chrome TV, um, so that is also something that we can do and that we will give to the developers and just say that you know hey this is what we can do uh, go wow basically. Can you explain what events you can measure uh, using a ball? Right Maybe now, talk about the yeah, and... yeah, right now. Mm -hmm. um, what we what we can measure or what we expose currently uh, in our in the current games that are online, uh, we have the bounce. Uh, we have different levels of bounce, so uh, we simplify it down to soft bounce, a normal bounce, and a hard bounce. Uh, yeah, okay. and but we are also exposing um, the the actual G force. So the G-force of the bounce is how hard you bounce it. So while how we have, hard those, you bounce yeah. So, okay. so for a more yeah. advanced developer mm. that don't want to take the easy way with this and want to have more data, right. that is available there also. So right. they can actually they can go from like zero G to uh, 16, 20, 40 something. I think our the hardware itself, the accelerometer, is uh, maxed out at 16 Gs. But it's 16 Gs in three axes, which is you know uh, x, y, and z axis. Um, we can we can draw yeah, this. Please, yes. Please oh, well, yes. we can try to draw it. Yes. Um, let's see if this works. Uh, so I will uh, try and see if I can can get uh, sharing going here. Um, let's see, we will share a screen on this other device, and I will try to get a sketch pad up. Here we go. So, uh, so basically, if we have the ball here, and then uh, inside of this ball, we have an accelerometer that basically gives us uh, x and uh, y, no, z, sorry, that we have z axis, and then we have the y axis going like up and down, left and right, mm -hmm. back and forward. Okay. These uh, actually, if we, if we look at these over time, and we have the G value here, and we have the time value here. Um, these would come out, come out as maybe three different types of values when you bounce the ball. Um, the amount of data here is really, really, really um, um, high resolution data. So working with Bluetooth technology, you kind of have to, 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 to keep it snappy. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to send all of that data mm -hmm. all the time because it's, gonna, it's basically going to overload. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we take all of this data and then we basically do the same thing except that we compress that to one mean value, which okay. is like the, all of these together. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on that, of course, here we will have the bounce. And then uh, right, let's see. And then we actually do expose... 10 samples of this curve. So in essence, if you want to go, you can go simple, like soft, normal, high, uh, or hard. Uh, you can go a little bit more advanced and take the actual G value, that in this case maybe is like 24 Gs or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then you can actually look at this sample data set mm -hmm. and you can get the whole curve mm -hmm. uh, of how that bounce actually worked. Um, and and we've, you, you could apply that curve to anything. You could say that you know if if somebody bounces, uh, if we do this a bit quickly, uh, if somebody shakes the ball, that will actually show the curve differently. Mm -hmm. So in this case, now oh, it's getting a bit messy here, but we'll just clean this up a little bit. So we have our 
g-force and time, and then uh, somebody starts shaking the ball, we will get a curve that will look more like this. So that means that anybody who wants to kind of analyze what the user is mm -hmm. doing, they could basically go, oh, you're shaking it now, or oh, you double shake it. Or, right. Okay. You know, so you can start okay. hooking mm -hmm. those, those types of actions around. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you rotate the ball, mm -hmm. you're going to have a very distinctive curve at some right. point. Um, and that, that in itself kind of shows how, you know, how much potential we have with this mm -hmm. fairly simple technology. It, you know, it's, it's, it's the, same type of, um, the same type of accelerometer that's being used in, um, in uh, what's it called, uh, the airbags. Right, okay. Yeah, it's the same okay. type. So that means that we so have- it can handle- Yeah, it can handle okay. a lot of force. Incredible. And the yep. ball is mm. super durable. Also, right. yeah, the technology we have here is like super durable. Mm. So we have we have abused the ball. Yeah. <laughs> we have we, we haven't run it over yet with a with a steamroller. Oh, that's but, anyone have a steamroller? Yeah. So so to anybody to out there, if you have a steamroller on yeah. Facebook or, or on, yeah, yeah, just send us an email. Uh, let's yes. get in touch. Yeah. Um, no, because we we basically love to to test the hardware also right. properly and just right. make sure that everything works right. and that it's. You know, it can handle anything from a, a small kid to a very grown kid. Uh, and yeah. Okay, so even we can play with it. That <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Possible. Yeah, okay. we. I think our, our record okay. internally in the company bouncing this ball in height. Yes. Uh, one bounce is probably around uh, I would say a bit over ten meters or so. Ten meters. Yeah, okay. in one bounce, and and that also shows kind of how the super super dense material has. It's super elastic and super dense, so it will basically. Oh, right, it's really high. Right, which is kind of fun. Just that. Right, right, right. Exactly. And those of you who uh, just tuned in, we uh, are we have a moon foam exterior. Maybe you can yeah. talk a little bit about that, about how bouncy the ball is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, what we uh, the, the the material uh, is a we call it moon foam because you know you, we want you to bounce it to the moon. Uh, it feels like it's going to go to the moon when you bounce it. That is kind of cool. Uh, on its own, uh, it's it's a super dense material, and it's uh, we haven't measured exactly, but we do know that it it's guaranteed that it contains um, or retains and returns at least seventy percent or even more of the force that you apply to it, uh, which means that it's going to it's going to bounce so a lot. That three quarter return rate, if you yeah yeah, yeah I would say maybe even more. Mm -hmm. um, we we will have to cool. do some scientific tests on that. Cool. So if we have any scientists out there, that would be nice. Also, it's like we are we are technicians here. Um, right. right. We we like technology. Mm -hmm. We love technology. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we, we visited KTH here in Stockholm, yeah. the Royal Technical Institute, um, uh, last weekend, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of people being really, really, uh, they wanted to have the ball and yes. the stuff with the ball. So, yes. so yeah, we'll get back to that also. Yeah, do. If you're interested in getting your hands on a ball, head over to worlds.com, W-R-L-D-S.com. You can get a ball shipped anywhere in the world. It's already ready to go. So yeah. uh, make your order now. And uh, and then you can get in touch with us. Make sure that you get the SDK. And actually, we should talk about the firmware very soon. Yes, We yes. should really go into that mm. because that's your mm. match, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's what I've been working with, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, we'll get the ball and then we can throw stuff your way if there's more to come up for this webinar for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we covered the SDK, mm. uh, what that is. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, we've touched on the ball itself also. We've touched on the technology inside of the ball, but there's uh, some other magic. You know, there has to be software inside of the ball also. Um, this is called firmware, um, which uh, on, its, uh, on its own, it's basically just software in the ball, doing stuff and handling the, the technology inside of the ball. But um, this allows us to add an extra layer of logic. So the ball could be completely standalone. It doesn't have to be connected to a phone or a computer. It basically, the ball could, uh, you know, you could bounce the ball and it would count the bounces inside of the ball. And when you get back home, you get to the phone and, and then you get the statistics out of that, for example. So, uh, so the firmware itself is the software inside of the ball in mm. that sense. Um, it, it also, it kind of what makes the ball tick. <laughs> it's yeah. not like a bomb though but it, it's a disclaimer disclaimer Just we don't any no yeah. violent references yeah no no it takes uh the ticks are actually that's what we count cpu cycles in ticks 
So yeah. I didn't know that. You still felt the need for it. Right? Yeah, no, no, no. That. That's the thing. It's like when a CPU works, it works really fast. We know that, and and the and and each CPU cycle, we can call a tick. So it basically what makes it ticks. That's the firmware. Um, and the firmware makes sure that you know it exposes all the, the data that we want from the ball. So it will uh, it will basically um, uh, it will take care of the ball's energy. Um, um, what's it called? It's called energy uh, optimization. That's the word I was looking for. So uh, the firmware, if you're not connected to the ball, the ball will go to sleep within three minutes, and then when you uh, like this, when you double tap the ball, it wakes up again. Okay. So that means that uh, the ball is super energy efficient. Uh, it will, we, we don't know how long it will last actually uh, on this battery. It, it has lasted, we have balls that's lasted over eight months already. And, and we were expecting uh, you know, one, a, a charge in the battery to last like four months, but it looks like it's just going and going and going. Right. Which is, is also, it's, it's an innovation in itself because nobody, not even the, the chip suppliers said right. that. They thought that it was like, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> but, right. but yeah, we, we, we just installed the software, the firmware on it, and, and it just goes. And, and it just goes. Is yeah. that a challenge? That could be a challenge. challenge? <laughs> that could be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, use the, the ball. ball. Yeah, if you can. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, without, without any hardware faults or anything, it will... It just keeps going which right. is great it's amazing right. it's kind of like in the sense of the way of 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 um you not have to worry about you know what's happening with my ball is it live or not or anything like that you don't have to think right about you it. don't have to charge it no. you don't have to have the charger yeah exactly right. you don't have to care for that right, 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 right. um we mm. are working on other versions later on that mm. we will also get to but mm. it's like um, you know the technology this is just the beginning yeah which is in itself uh, super super exciting yeah because we we have so many ideas, no. <laughs> we have so many ideas and so little time, but uh, but you know we are we are moving forward faster than we even thought that we would move forward. I know it's actually kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know what? There's there's one thing I want to draw us back to is mm -hmm. the the cloudware. Can yes. Can you talk about that for a second? Well, I can try to illustrate this uh, again with my amazing drawing skills. Okay. Um, uh, where we, it, it's always more fun to see drawings. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. I'm a very, very amateurish drawer. Um, hopefully, I can get things going here. Yes, here we go. Uh, wait, I need to actually share the screen also. Um, otherwise, it's going to be pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do. So we're pulling up a whiteboard so that we yeah. can uh, show you visualization of the clouds. Art. Yeah, unfortunately, anybody joining on Facebook oh, won't, yeah. won't be seeing this. I'm really sorry. You will. Uh, we are recording this though, so you will be able to f see outtakes or the whole video Me. later. Exactly. Right? Hopefully the recording is hopefully, going well. Hopefully we're doing so good that you don't want us to cut anything out. Mm, exactly. All right. So. Um, no pressure on this drawing. Exactly. <laughs> so this drawing, um, it, it, it kind of illustrates our whole, we call it tech stack. Mm -hmm. uh, tech stack is kind of all of the different technologies that we have, that we employ in the, in the whole you know, ecosystem of worlds. Um, in that sense, uh, if um, we, we, we talked about the firmware, so if we have the ball and we have, uh, we have the firmware, so this is kind of a layer on its own. So this is the software that runs inside of the ball. The firmware in, its in itself will, will um, connect. Well, the SDK will actually make sure that the firmware connects and, and, and sends data. So we have, the, we have another layer, which is our SDK. Mm -hmm. And as we've covered briefly, it's, uh, it's still very advanced. There's a lot to do, a lot we can do, a lot we have done, et cetera. Uh, the SDK on its, uh, on its uh, own or in its turn will actually uh, make sure that the app uh, will work. So, so that's another layer in this mm. stack of technology. That's why we say tech stack. Um, and then uh, we have a, a little bit kind of on the side here. The SDK uh, will help to communicate with our cloud service. So we actually have... Uh, a nice little cloud here, mm. <laughs> uh, which we are working on. Um, it it um, collects some data 
uh, it collects uh, things like uh, how the ball is actually uh, kind of feeling right now, you know, the properties of the ball. Uh, if, uh, if, the, if the battery is running out, we still haven't seen that in the data. It doesn't really go down as fast as we were expecting and things like that. So that's amazing. Um, You've never seen a ball run out of battery. Well, we have seen balls run out of battery, mm -hmm. but that's because we hacked the ball. So okay. we, we've done, wow. yeah, we hacked the firmware okay. and we basically we done things. It. Yeah, we okay. force it to kind of drain the battery okay. really quickly. Right. Uh, and, and that's the thing. It's like, it's not normal use. It's not the normal technology right. running. Because that, that would be like eight months plus, something like that. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. It's like, uh, and, and yeah, so, so that's kind of, and we've seen, of course, uh, some faulty hardware that's been draining the battery in no time. Uh, that's not normal either. Uh, if any user would ever experience that, then we will, of course, replace the ball. Yes, that's exactly. you know that's exactly. uh, we we are um, very 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 open in that sense. We want to make sure that everybody has a great experience. So that, not only from the technology, but the whole you know the whole world's ecosystem yeah. should be a good experience. Exactly. Of course. Exactly. Um, Talk but, to us, worlds.com, and any of our social feeds. We're going to respond really quickly. Yep. To world's creations. Yep. <laughs> Losing battery on Facebook. I'm Oopsie. really sorry. So Oopsie. Facebook, if we run, if we disappear, um, the phone is not connected to the power <laughs> source. But you know, you you can see the rerun later on. That's, yeah, that's exactly. That will be good. Yeah. So um, yeah. So we have the app. We have the SDK. We have the firmware. We have the cloud. Um, and and. We have more features that we want to add into the cloud service. I'm not going to give them all away oh, right now, but yeah. I'm going to say it's uh, very user oriented. We are we are strongly for communities. We are strongly for you know developer communities, gamer communities, um, any type of um, uh, educational institution communities, and we're uh, music communities also. That's that's where yes. we were last week. Yes, music. Tech Fest in Stockholm. It's only mm. happening in Stockholm this year. It's the it so we were at the yeah the music tech fest. Yes, we it was it was really happening. We brought uh, balls. We we were we were going to do a demo only. Uh, it ended up being uh, an invite to their hackathon. Also, uh, we uh, made a special firmware for the ball that exposed all the data in raw, uh, which was you know at that point was very heavy for our SDK to work on uh, to kind of take in, but the hackers at the hackathon wrote their own libraries and functions uh, that, that took care of all of that data. And they're sharing the code online. They're Where? On GitHub, for example. Okay. Yeah, so we are actually going to make that code available also okay. uh, from, uh, from our site, from worlds.com. Okay. Um, that, is, that is in our backlog. We are going to put yeah. it out there. Um, this is something that is, is core also for, for worlds, uh, open source community. Uh, we we believe strongly in the power of the community in people exploring the technology together. Um, so so we might even put out the firmware out there okay. for people to hack the firmware. You never Great. know, but we Great. might. Yeah. Um, it is you know it is uh, the hardware is actually uh, uh, widely supported hardware already. So there is a, a large developer community around that the same hardware we're using. Which means that if we put if we if we put out the right instructions of what they need to do with the hardware, uh, there's probably a lot of people already that has a working firmware or close to working firmware that they could put into the ball. So this means that we are we are supporting uh, any initiative that we can see. That is, you know, that's what we want to do. We don't want to claim this for ourselves right, and, and say right. that no you may not hack the ball you know right. there's so many companies saying like don't touch the yes. hardware you yeah. you will ruin the warranty blah 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 right we're not doing that we're doing the complete mm. opposite as much as we can uh mm. with the limited resources that we have it's yes. a matter of <laughs> it's, we're, <laughs> we're still a startup yeah. Um, yeah 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 so so it's more about um it's more about supporting all of these initiatives or you know anybody who wants to hack on the ball I, I, you know, I invite them, you know, you're welcome, come yeah. here um, or just reach out online, yeah. talk to us, we will support you. Um, we will give you information on the protocol between the ball and the SDK and stuff like that. Um, because we saw that it, it, it enabled uh, some really fantastic results at this music hack. And so quickly, I mean, yeah. I'm doing some hour hack, but how much notice did you have for that hack? Um, I 
think we got the email about less than 24 hours before, no, a little bit over 20, 24 yeah, hours, yeah. the day before the hack was going to start. Right. They basically said, can you join the hack? Right. And we said, well, yes, I, we think so. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, and I actually did my own hack. I, I wrote the new firmware for these guys the first day of the hack. Uh, I started at um, uh, nine in the morning mm -hmm. and delivered an update to the balls at 10 in the evening. And they stayed up all night hacking away on that. Right. Which kind of shows the power of it. How it's quickly like, you can yeah. move with it. Yeah, exactly. So it's worth even and just for someone who hasn't uh, got a lot of experience but might just want to have a, a, a flirt with, yeah. with it. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. There's some, you know, there's so many different definitions for what open source is. Yes, there is. Do you there have is. one? Do you have a definition? <laughs> um, this is, I think that's the thing. Open source is kind of, uh, well, the, the basis of open source is that you give away the code or you make your code publicly available and then uh, anybody who wants to contribute to the code or change the code uh, are free to do so okay. most of the time. There is different levels of open source, but um, we, we will work towards that. Um, we have already, you know, we are giving away examples how to implement the SDK. And that's our first step because we want people to get in and get started fast. Um, and then this hackathon thing uh, at KTH, that was another step. Uh, where we say that, you know, yeah, I, 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 it's a two line email to actually write our pro about our protocol between the ball right. and the, and the, and whatever is mm. reading the ball data. So that means that anybody implementing that can, can do it really quickly. Uh, there was one guy who did it in, in less than one hour. He, he came back to me and just said, I'm done now. I was like, what, what have you done? And he was <laughs> like, oh, well, I connected the ball, um, to my computer uh, in super low latency, like millisecond latency, which means that it takes, you know, from the ball, from the bounce, the data that goes over to the computer, is ta it takes less than five milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, which is almost real time. Um, and that's, uh, that in itself is, a, is an accomplishment that blew me away. Um, so, uh, so I, you know, and, and then, then he shared the code to the other guys in like the, the competing hackathon teams that were doing other projects and they were just going like, can we use your code? And we're like, yeah, put it on GitHub. It's up and, and it's there. And uh, so he, he wrote a wrapper for our protocol for something called Node.js. Uh, Node.js is a, is a JavaScript server, um, uh, very often used as a web server. So it's actually one, it's a web server implementation. You can use it for that. You can use it for other types of servers also. I have it running at home as a home automation server. Um, and, um, and so in theory, I could, I could connect the ball to my home automation system. I can turn off lights and change the color of my lights with the ball. And you know, you can use it for anything. <laughs> And create so there's just yeah. huge uh, prospect opportunity like there's yes. there's so much stuff. There's, that's the thing it's like right. uh, yeah so we'll, we'll we'll probably get back to that later on in this uh, session I just also keep talking about it. I mean there's so much potential <laughs> yeah so, yeah so yeah so, so we, potential from yeah MIDI controller to game controller to uh, home automation home controller um, driving cars with the balls, kind of yeah maybe right? uh, oh yeah or at that's, least running it over with a steamroller. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> see if it see if it holds. Yeah. Um, no, but that's the thing. It's like it it is apparently fairly easy to get started with. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what we wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm super happy that we see that type of response back now. Also, mm -hmm. and the feedback we mm -hmm. get is positive. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 times we do get negative feedback, it's still constructive. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, I don't like this, but it would be great if you could do this. Mm -hmm. And then we're just kind of like, oh yeah, we haven't thought about that. Let's do that. And then we do it. Yes, so it's, exactly. Actually yeah. doing it. Yeah, rather than you're, just you're, going like, no, nah, no. never deflecting things. No, no, we, very cool. that, is, that is, I think it's part of the world's philosophy or policy in the company is that, you know, we, we are just as strong uh, as, you know, the support we get. Mm. Uh, and in this case, if we're open, we get support. Yeah. You know, and, and people like it. And, yeah. uh, and people approach us with, with, uh, you know the weirdest questions, but it's usually super creative and super yeah. super inspiring. Also, um, and also when we can actually respond to that in, in those questions, then then it's amazing. You know? Speaking of questions, mm, let's yeah. answer some. Are we? We've are, got a few. Yeah. So, um, uh, I, where do we have the questions? Uh, they're they're on on uh, the screen. I've got, I've got the screen oh, here. You got a screen. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's use that one. Can I read them? Yes, you may. Yes, please. Thank you. So, we have 
one commenter saying, MTF Music Tech Fest was awesome. Can we buy the ball in the UK? May I take this one? Yes, you may. Thank you. You can. We will ship all over the world, actually. You just have to go to worlds.com, W-R-L-D-S.com, and you can order your ball, and we'll ship it all to you for no extra cost. Mm. No extra cost. Uh, next question from Robbie M. Why is the SDK in a ball? In the ball? Yeah. I guess, the, I guess they're asking, why is it in a ball? <laughs> <laughs> when is it in a dumbbell? Why, why a ball? Mm. Well, this, this is the thing. It's, uh, well, First, the SDK is not in the ball. The SDK is helping the ball. Okay. So, yeah, so it's, it's, okay. so you can, you can see it as, um, um, uh, you know, the, the bridge between the ball and the phone. That's kind of what the SDK accomplishes. Okay. Uh, that and also with documentation gives the developers different ways of, of understanding what's happening with the ball and what potential we have in the ball also. Um, so, so uh, yeah, well, we could, you know, in, in theory, this technology can be used anywhere. Uh, it doesn't have to be in a ball. Uh, we're, that's just the first thing that we are doing. Worlds and Christian's own you know, vision was to... From Baboba. From yeah. Baboba, yeah, to do the ball and a digital connected ball. And in this case, we made it a toy first. Um, it might as well, you know, it could be used, as we have seen, as a music controller. Um, it can, uh, further iterations that we might do later on could be uh, any type of, of object. Yeah. Uh, the technology is really small. Right now, the chip is actually hardware in there is only two by two centimeters. So that is like That's a one inch by one inch. Yeah, even even inches. less, even less than one inch. Right. Yes, yeah. it's a two and a half. Five less. Yes, yeah. uh, but it's basically the size of a stamp. Mm. Um, and that's together with battery and processors, like the CPU in there and the accelerometer and all of the other small components that sits in there. Uh, it's tiny. And the thing is, now we're looking at designing a new chip. And this chip will be even smaller. So smaller, faster, and better. So does it have to be in a spherical device? Does it have to no, not necessarily. be contained no. in any shape? This, this technology could actually be used in, um, in, in shoes or in um, gloves or in you know, a bat or a golf club. There are other project, uh, other products that we've seen uh, sporting products that's been very very focused and niched on one thing and the ball in this case can it, it's it, it seems like a niche but it isn't right that's the thing it's right. like you know as soon as it's, right. it's like you know instead of thinking outside of the right. box we think toy. outside of yeah. the ball yeah. so, yeah. Nice. so it's, it, it's it is not a niche product it's like yes the toy in itself looks like a niche toy and like a niche, niche product but it can be used for so many things um, it's, you know, we're, we're, I myself, I play golf and I, I'm actually, I'm testing the ball for golf activities, not specifically, uh, shooting the ball away yeah. on the golf course, because that would probably be illegal <laughs> or, or very frowned oh, upon. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, mm. you know, if somebody gets the idea of, of shooting the ball out of a cannon, that's on them. Uh, we know that actually we know that uh, in uh, Boba has had these challenges where people build devices that shoots away their balls. Now they can actually shoot the world's ball and, and, <laughs> and measure and, how far it goes. Yeah, and measure how far and the angle use, and things yeah, like that. Use yeah, use GPS. Oh, fun. Yeah, yeah. Fun, yeah. Fun, we don't fun. have a GPS in the ball though, but you could always you walk from one monitor. point to the next. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, we we could put this technology into anything, mm -hmm. and and this kind of highlights us as uh, a tech company uh, thinking of you know how can we how can we put tech forward to yeah. people, and 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 then let people dream up new ideas. Yeah. So that's what we that's yeah. also what we do. All the worlds. Yeah, all, all the worlds. worlds. It's not just one yeah. world. It's, it's, it's multiple worlds. Yeah. Uh, we have another question from <laughs> Me Too. Me Too is the name of the world's ball. I don't know yeah, if that's, that's your real it. name. I think we have mm. a fan. Oh, it could be um, a fan. But Me Too wants to know where can I find documentation to get an initial Hello World game up and running? Would, yeah. Let, let, uh, let's start with that. So we start with where can you find the documentation for this? Yes. Um, well, so. Currently, uh, we, we've had so much to do the last couple of weeks. So we're a little bit behind on updating the, the site, but there is a website. Um, you can go to dev.worlds.com. 
Dev. Dev. D E V. D E V. That's short for so, developer. Yeah. Dot worlds. Dot worlds dot com. There you will find, in a very Spartan way, two <laughs> versions of the Android SDK documentation. That will kind of give you a, 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 an insight into what the actual, you know, what, what's going on there. Uh, and then you will have to reach out to us and we will supply you with the example projects and everything. This is kind of like the next step of the, of the more openness that we are working on is that we're going to kind of make this developer website that's going to be a lot more content. content. It's like it's going to be full of, of examples, code, uh, links to people that have uh, contributed or that, you know, people that we can highlight. Um, so, so we're gonna focus on doing that in in uh, yeah this Q Q three Q four we're going into right now mm. I think so so that is kind of our focus on the tech side is that we're going to engage with so many developers as possible as many <laughs> developers as possible um, different events and everything and we will also try to work on the site and make it even more you know meaty in content basically yeah and if we have any suggestions for more information that you really want on the website do let us know it's um. It's a living site. It yeah, of like, course. It's, it's all for you. Like, mm. it's not for us at all. It's all for you. And it's if you need more information that you think should just be up there, just let us know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We are in startup phase. So we just, if we if it's not up there, it's just because we need, we're probably just making a bit of a push to get it up there. Yeah. But, but <laughs> yeah. we do have, we have a backlog. We are working yeah. um, to point out to all the developers out there. We are working with Scrum methodologies, of course. So we are working in sprints of two weeks. Uh, we have a massive backlog with ideas, yeah. but we are we are working on them and yeah. we are reprioritizing. Especially if somebody actually contacts exactly. us and we go like, "Oh yeah, we already had that idea." Okay, so the need is now. Let's go for that then. Yeah. So we are we are trying to kind of stay very flexible and agile in that sense. Also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we actually had a tweet come in yesterday asking uh, if they had some feedback for us where they should go, and mm. uh, the answer is you can email anyone in the team. First of all, mm. I mean it's just a first name at worlds.com, yeah. but also on social media at worlds creations. Uh, it will go actually through our help desk, uh, so we you can ask anything, and you're going to get to the right person eventually. Yes, yeah. and uh, and we are yeah any social. Please. Facebook is still running. It's still it's amazing. Running. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So <laughs> hi. Hello, <laughs> Hello um, So Misa also said, would be great to see a readout from a bounce on my Android phone. Yes, and that you can do today. Mm. So basically, you can uh, you can um, well you can check out the documentation. You can contact us. We will supply you with an example project, uh, either a native project, which means that it's a native Android app mm. um, and built for that. Uh, or a Unity project, if you prefer that. Mm. Um, we have both. Mm -hmm. um, we will also have the same, or well, yeah, we do have the, the native part for iOS, and we are implementing iOS Unity support right this moment, basically this week and a little bit in the beginning of next week. Okay. And then we will put, out, put it out there. Yeah. Uh, so, so we'll, yeah, everything is basically it's cooking right now. Cool. And it will be hot off the presses, so to speak, and smoking hot for any developers to use out there. Yeah. Mm. Um, should it go on social media this week? Should we, will we release a bit of information? Um, yeah, I think when we actually update the dev site, at that point, we will make, uh, I, I think we will do a yeah. proper announcement on cool. social media. Yeah. Because the thing is, you know, it doesn't really matter which level of developer you are. Yeah. Like if you're a beginner or if you're a, a you know super senior developer at a super high, a cool high tech company here in Sweden or somewhere else in the world, um, we will try to help you along. We will try to support you in any way, shape, or form. If you're an aspiring game developer, we will help you with that also. It's uh, we we actually we've had two interns over the summer. Yes, fantastic yes. guys here yes. for in in Stockholm. Yes. Um, they. Yeah, and yeah. and they are actually so been part of uh, two of the games that we are, that we have released. Now. Yeah. So yeah. so it's um and and they came from basically knowing not much. Mm. They knew how to use Unity, but n they had never implemented a native plugin mm. uh, or native library into Unity. Wait, that was in summer. In the summer, yes. Chris it's the very beginning of spring. Just in case you're watching some months yeah. later, it's now September. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So a whole game got created over mm. summer. Just, yeah, yeah, actually two. Two, well, games. two games. Two games. Yeah, exactly. and, and we exactly. had, we had uh, mm. I, I think we had an idea of 
like five or six different games that we want to do also internally here. So that's also something we're going to try to do. We're going to try to arrange hackathons here at Worlds um, and invite people to come here. And you know, even if you know nothing, if you're if you're somebody uh, a designer, or if you're a uh, uh, you know, if you're even if you're like a PR person who wants to learn how to program or just test it out, yeah, then that's what's going to happen. You know, that's going to there's going to be an opportunity to do that or multiple opportunities. Yeah. Um, so we will do that, and you know, take a look at any social media. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and and yeah. all of the other Twitters, uh, Twitter also, and and we will post there. And we'll invite people. Yeah, Twitch too. I know there's a Twitch stream going. Oh yes, yes, time. yes. We yes. let's not forget about Twitch. Yes. <laughs> um, another question. This is from Tom. Oh, there you go. It's kind of uh, uh, you kind of just answered Tom's question. Uh -huh. I am just starting to learn programming, and I've just made one app so far. What I want to know is how much knowledge do I need to get started if I want to build an app that connects to the world's ball. So you kind well, of just answered Tom, that. Yes. Tom, you're in. In essence. You and you, all your friends and your fam and your cat yeah. and your dog. It's, it's more or less just mm. copy paste the code and press play. Ooh. That's that's Command C, Control Z, Command V, Control V. Yeah. And then Done. and then play it on your phone, basically. <laughs> yeah. That's the it, it yeah. isn't it isn't much harder than that. Mm -hmm. Then of course you have to modify the stuff and everything, but that is that's up to your imagination basically. And and uh, most developers out there, you know, I know there's a lot of senior developers, a lot of professionals that kind of frown upon the fact that you know most of the stuff can be found online. Copy pasting code might not, might not be the best thing to do every time, but at least it will get you started. It will get you um, working with the code rather than just reading manuals or you know reference mm -hmm. guides and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we 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 will you know in, from our side we. We like to supply people, even you know, beginners. Or uh, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we will probably do like a kids hack also. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We will, we, will, we should right. invite kids. Yes. Uh, I, you know, come and yes. hack and learn how to hack and yes. program. There's that's the thing. There's so many different uh, platforms out there where where you can learn to program. It's mm. like you know, you can you can. There's platforms where uh, where you program uh, with Legos, for example, mm. and things like that. Mm. All of these different platforms, we are going to try to get into mm. um, and support. Mm. Uh, which means that you know, in the case of the the native libraries, they're they're basically just plugins that you put in uh, put into your native app. Um, in the Node.js, it's a module that you pull in and it starts connecting to the ball and expose the data. Mm. Um, there is there's nothing saying that we couldn't actually take this to the next level with Scratch, for example, mm. which is another, that's an educational programming environment uh, that is being used in schools. Right. So we actually did get that um, at Stockholm Tech Fest mm. uh, a week ago. Mm. Um, there was a guy who came to us and just went like, you should definitely support Scratch. And you know, I, I have no reason to say no. Mm. There is, it's, it's like time-wise, maybe, but open. yeah, of course. Why should I, why should I say no to that? That is just like that's a that's a way of getting our platform out there to people and get people to start, you know, applying their fantasy and their dreams and their creative ideas. Why do people say no? Um, is maybe, it an maybe IP thing. Nah, I don't know. I, that's a hard question. <laughs> no, no, it could be it could be anything from yeah. time to that they just don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. We we aren't that many people in worlds. We're about ten people. Yeah. And um, uh, the thing is that it's uh, we've reached a point in in in, uh, in time history maybe uh, where it's actually fairly easy as we've seen to implement another another supporting platform. Um, which is great for us. That means that we can answer yes to the request, and we don't have to say no. Uh, we can you know, we can say yeah, it will take a couple of weeks or a couple of days or a couple of hours. It depends. Uh, but the thing is, it inspires us also. So it's, true. Yeah, it's uh, it, we. Uh, I had requests where I said yeah, we're going to take it in the next sprint or the sprint after that, and then I got an idea over the weekend, and I basically just pressed the button, and we had a new version for the farmer right. where we got even more data. Um, so, so it's it's kind of like it makes you think, and that's why we invite the questions and, and requests also. Because awesome. we, of course, we don't think of everything, but uh, we think about many things. Yeah. Um, so many things. Um, yeah. Tom also wants to know what programming languages do you need to know. 
That is a mix. Um, well, right now, if you're on iOS, it would be Objective C. Uh, I do believe that we can actually do a Swift implementation also for iOS. Um, uh, it might work. Yeah, it's basically uh, as long as it works for Objective C, it usually works for Swift also. So, um, uh, so it's either that on iOS if you have an iPhone and you want to program for that, or an iPad. Um, if you're on Android, it's Java. Um, and uh, let's see, yeah, the Node.js is JavaScript. Uh, and then we have, uh, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, Unity, of course, that's C sharp. Um, and that's, there's various reasons why those languages are, are the ones chosen, but each platform are, yeah, this is also kind of like, there's a, there's a camp that might say, no, they're not the same. Of course, there's a lot of underlying um, features and, and, um, and functions or, or uh, what's it called like um, well different layers in the in the languages that are different and you know memory handling and effectivity and optimization on different platforms but uh, in essence if you think about the logic what you want to come uh, what you actually want to accomplish like listening to the bounce event for example then that is the same it's basically knowing what event, uh, event to listen to and then uh, hooking up to that event and then doing something with the data that comes back. So, so the logic itself doesn't really differ that much. Uh, it's, it's usually very easy to go from one platform to the other. Um, then of course, if you want to do really more advanced things, then you need to kind of go into reading reference guides and talking to a certain developer community for that language or, you know, finding code, uh, testing code, and testing, you know, testing the limits mm -hmm. of what can be done. So it's not just, it's, there's actually a whole, um, a whole, there's a whole hierarchy of opportunities. Like it's not just, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of complexity mm, yeah. that is accessible. Yeah. Um, it's part of the open source package. Yeah, mm. definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and the different developer communities, you know, they are usually very supportive also. Mm. I know that uh, Unity, for example, they have a very thriving developer community. Mm. So, so as long as you, if you take our example, our project, and then you start working on that and you get problems, then you can either ask us and we will try to answer your questions, or you can just as well ask the Unity community. Yeah, right. And, mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. what they say. Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, yeah, I've, I've even done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, many, so many times. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. so, yeah. Uh, two more questions, I think, before we finish up. Yep. Uh, Lisa also wanted to know, I have some issues with the uh, BLE connection. Hmm. If the ball bounces a couple of meters away, BLE. BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy. Bluetooth Low Energy. Yes. So uh, they lose connection when the ball bounces a couple of meters away. Can they fix this somehow? Um, we are working on it, definitely. We, hmm. we, uh, there is, uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth is kind of like, it's not meant for great distances. There are hardware that supports great in, uh, distances. But usually, if you have a Bluetooth headset, for example, and you walk away from your phone, it starts cutting up fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, in the case of the ball, uh, this current version of the ball has, um, has a distance that's depending a little bit on how, how much other Bluetooth devices are around mm -hmm. and things like that, you know, electric or uh, radio interference that might happen, uh, that could cause the ball to lose connection. So um, that would happen in a shared office space, perhaps? Maybe, maybe not. We've seen it here in our office that it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, we've seen it in other instances when we've been standing at, a, at an event, for example, and there's been uh, unusually a lot of Bluetooth devices and Wi-Fi, etc. Uh, that will cause interference. Um, the good thing here is that the SDK itself will actually detect this disconnect um, and Bluetooth in itself will actually try to connect, reconnect a couple of times and then give up after a couple of seconds. Um, and then on top of that, the SDK will try to reconnect also. Uh, it will also raise an event to the developer. So the developer can handle this, that it got disconnected and it can tell and show that in the, in the game and pause the game so you don't, you know, you don't lose what, are you, what you're working or, or lose your points or whatever the game is about. Um, but it means that we can actually handle that back and forth. Um, we are actually looking into technology to improve the signal and make it less, um, uh, less prone to disturbances also. And it's kind of in worlds, we have, we have both the development that's going on right now with the 
the software part. And then we also look at new hardware solutions that will bring this up into another level mm. of, uh, of efficiency and performance mm. and, and uh, more, more mm. features and data that we can get out from it. Um, so that, that's coming along. Awesome. Um, but yes, in short, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, stand by. Mm. Last question is from Andre. Uh, when is the second gen ball being released? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not going to look you in the eye as you answer that. Yeah. I'm going to be diplomatic in this We're actually running way. out of time too, yes. so conveniently. I will talk very yeah. slowly until the connection <laughs> cuts out. Yeah. No, but, but uh, actually we are working on a second version of the ball. Uh, that I can confirm uh, since we are looking at more technologies, more features, and stuff like that. Um, we, we don't know exactly when we will have this in place. Yeah. Of course, that is, uh, it's um, uh, due to outside circumstances of getting uh, different types of um, components in there, etc. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, uh, what, we, what we can say is that it will happen relatively soon. But relatively soon yeah okay yeah. let's leave it at that <laughs> yeah. let's leave it at that it is a mm. uh, time to end today's webinar yeah uh that was so. uh, super political sorry i can't tell you <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for those of you who are watching on zoom and those of you who are watching on facebook i really love your support there will be more webinars in the future um mm. and we will publish some of this at least uh, on social media so keep following us at both creations head over to our website worlds.com and see you next time Bye. Future event. Yeah. Bye. Oh, one more thing. Oh, oh, oh. One more thing. One uh, more thing. Yeah, if you do want to reach out to me, yes. uh, you can either find me on Matthias, M A T T I A S, mm -hmm. at worlds.com, where I'm actually also monitoring the support at worlds.com. Yes. yes. So, uh, so you can reach out there. And other than that, you can basically find us. Yeah.